In this video, we're going to discuss governance in enterprise architecture. And governance is going to be one of those critical things. And it's a critical task we do as an enterprise architect, which involves setting up governance structure and change management processes. And in this video, we're going to talk about why the architect, whether they're a cloud architect or an enterprise architect, needs to actually create some governance structure around their architectures. So what is governance? Governance is going to be something that can oversee all of the technology, all of the things that are going on. And the key is if you're new to enterprise architecture or you're, be, or you're training to become an enterprise architect, when we deal with an enterprise, we could be dealing with 100,000 or more employees. We could be dealing with two or 300,000 IP addresses, tens of thousands of servers, potentially a thousand different applications, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand remote locations and remote workers across two or three clouds and many data centers. So that's our typical enterprise environment. And when you look at the enterprise architecture that there's a lot of stuff going on and what does that mean it means if somebody were to do something without understanding the impact on the entire system they could accidentally break the entire business or shut down core function of the business so when we're dealing with things that are this big and this complicated we need a lot of people to be able to look at things and understand the impact of it and that's why we have to create a governance structure in enterprise architecture cloud architecture or truthfully any good big uh, large-scale architecture so the first part of the governance structure is it'll help us align our IT with our business goals. Because if we build this governance structure and there's key stakeholders in there and there's key business leaders and technology leaders, we're getting the team together and that way we can make sure that the business architecture aligns with the technology architecture. And that's really what we're trying to do with getting some technology governance in place. That's one of the main things to promote alignment between business initiatives and technology initiatives. Now, the next reason we want some governance is to establish a standard and some best practices. Maybe we wanna have, uh, say, the Linux team create a base Linux image, and maybe we want the security team to evaluate that Linux image, uh, further lock it down, harden it, test it, and then that becomes the standard Linux image that's used everywhere. Now, it would be much better to use that than it would be to have 500 different versions of Linux operating systems with different levels of vulnerabilities. So, whether it's a single device, whether it's how you would architect a demilitarized zone, it doesn't matter. We're going to try to create a consistent guideline for our architectural design, their implementations, their maintenance for every single thing, as well as even the subcomponents like a server we even want to look at. Standards, best practices, we want to do it the best way that we know or can figure out based upon the research we can do for our organization's long-term benefits. Now, the key here is that we want to enhance decision making with uh, governance for our architectures. We want to find some way to have a structured framework to evaluate IT proposals and solutions. And why do we want to do this? I mean, every single day in technology as executives, we're going to get 100 to 1,000 people that want to propose a new technology thing for us. Every day you'll get at least 100 emails if you're a technology executive from different companies that have a solution for you. But, you know, how do we evaluate these solutions? How do we use data to determine uh, what these solutions are? If they'll make an actual impact to the business? Will they help the business? Will they hurt the business? How will that integrate with everything else? That's why we need this governance structure so we can speak with large numbers of people and uh, provide a structured way to look at it and an impact analysis of the inform and impact of that technology solution, what have you, on the business. Now, compliance and risk management is something else that we actually gain from governance. So let's say we're dealing with a hospital and they've got some legal requirements. Let's say they're in the U.S. and amongst other things, they have to comply to HIPAA. So by having some people that understand HIPAA, potentially some HIPAA attorneys that are working for that healthcare organization oversee the healthcare architectures and look at it, they can evaluate if those architectures can meet HIPAA requirements, at least from a legal and regulatory perspective. So obviously we want to make sure we ensure compliance and risk management. Having governance, risk compliance people, uh, security people, legal on that team can make sure that the organization does so. Now, another thing that we really, really want, one of the biggest components out of governance is change management. 
We need some form of a framework to figure out when a change needs to occur, how do we make the change, the impact of the change on the business, and we need a very smooth way to do this. So that's another reason where realistically we're doing this. So another reason for governance is we want to make sure we improve our resource utilization. I'm not joking. I've gone to businesses that have a thousand uh, applications and each one is used 3%. And uh, people aren't even using some, but all these thousand applications present uh, security vulnerabilities. Each little one could be potentially a threat vector, and they're not using them. And if they had a thousand at three percent, maybe we could knock it down to a hundred. And maybe those hundred applications could be easier to maintain, cost the organization less. And maybe we could just use a hundred. And maybe we found a better way for people to do things so they waste less time, um, potentially due to an inefficient process. Because sometimes the wrong process can make things uh, much harder to do than they need to be. So a little bit of accountability clearly comes here. Because when you create a governance structure, you're defining roles and responsibilities for the people, the teams, the key stakeholders. And that means people will own it and they'll be transparent in their decisions and others can actually see it. And I'd say the uh, last couple of reasons is, uh, realistically speaking, having all these people, business and technology people on the same team means collaboration. It means more light, it's more going to be more likely that the architecture provides value to the business. And by doing it consistently, marrying the business to the, to the technology teams, we're, we're not only building stakeholder confidence, but we're ensuring long-term sustainability of the business because we're going to be giving the business the best food, so to speak, the best nutrition it can have to grow and thrive, which is really what our goal is. So governance is going to be the backbone of enterprise architecture, cloud architecture, because it's going to really ensure that the IT strategies are going to be consistently aligned with the business objectives. If you've enjoyed this video and uh, want to become an enterprise architect, join me on a free architect webinar where we'll go over the enterprise architect role. We'll talk about what we do. We'll talk about all the skills that you need and how to become one. And of course, we'll answer any questions you have about your career live and free on Zoom. Sign up. The link is in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I will see you soon.